Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? I'm Yudal Sines from MinuteMethod.com and today we're going to talk about the four ways to say the letter G in Spanish. So this video is going to answer three questions for you. First, what are the four ways to say the letter G in Spanish? Second, how do you pronounce each way? And then third, when do you use each pronunciation? So question number one, what are the four ways to say the letter G in Spanish? So when I use angle brackets around a letter, that means I'm referring to the letter, to the symbol, the script. But when I use slashes to enclose a letter, that means I'm referring to the sound. And when I use the slashes, I'm using the international phonetic alphabet symbol. So don't be intimidated by the symbols. They'll become clear to you as we go along. So the letter G is represented by four different sounds. The first sound is the G sound, but then there's also the L sound and the H sound, and finally the H sound. So the letter G in Spanish can be said four different ways, G, L, H, and H. Now, second question, how do you pronounce each way? So we'll start with the G sound because this is the most familiar to people who speak English as well as most other languages. This sound is officially called the voiced velar stop, but don't let that name intimidate you. It's telling us what part of the mouth we need to use to create this sound. So if you press the back of your tongue against the velum, that's why it's called velar, or the soft palate is the other name for it, then this is where you begin with the sound. Say the letter G or say that G sound in the mirror, g, 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 and you'll see your tongue, the back of it is moving back to the soft palate. Another way to find your soft palate is to take your finger, start slowly crawling through the top of your mouth. When you're at the hard palate, you'll feel it. It's hard and kind of ridgy and bumpy, but then you go deep enough, all of a sudden you feel soft tissue. That is your soft palate. That is where you're creating the sound. Now, if you press the back of your tongue, point number five on this chart right here, against your soft palate firmly, so you block airflow, you'll be building air pressure behind that point. So when you remove the tongue, you'll release in a large burst of air, while vibrating your vocal cords, where it says glottis on this chart, that's your vocal cords, and you say g, g. That's how you make the g sound. And in Spanish, the sound shows up in words like gota, gato, gusto. Next, we have the l sound. Now, this sound is similar to the g, but slightly different. This is called the voiced velar fricative, or it can be an approximant. I'll explain what that means in a moment. Once again, you're placing the back of your tongue against the soft palate, but this time loosely, or even sometimes if it's an approximate, you're not touching it at all. So it's a fricative if you're touching, it's an approximate if you're approximating or getting close to that point but not touching. And then from that point, you leave your tongue in the position while allowing voiced air to pass through that constriction of the channel. So, uh, uh, when I do an approximate and it's not touching, uh, uh. And when it is touching, uh, 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 uh. all right, you get that? And then words you might hear that in Spanish are agua, jugo, amigo. So notice when I say these, I'm not making a hard um, explosion of air like I do with the g sound. I'm not saying agua, jugo, amigo. I'm saying agua, jugo, amigo. That's the l sound. Then we have the h sound. Once again, same part of the mouth is velar, but this time is voiceless velar fricative. So you're pressing the back of the tongue firmly against the soft palate, as we did before, um, and you're leaving your tongue in this position while allowing voiceless air to pass through the constriction. So once again, place the back of your tongue, but you're not vibrating your vocal cords anymore. You're forcing voiceless air through that point. Now, a lot of people um, struggle with this sound, and I give you the recommendation to say the K sound over and over again. K -k 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 -k. Say it fast enough, it starts to kind of blend together into a K -k 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 -k. The K sound's made at the exact same point. It's also voiceless, um, but it's not a fricative, it's a stop, meaning you let the air pressure build up and explode out, but this time you're letting the air pressure fricatively pass through those two points. And words you can hear this in Spanish are Gente, Jorge, Gerencia. All right. Now, how do you pronounce the sound? The this is called the voiceless glottal fricative. It's made at the vocal cords or the glottis. 
Um, and what you're doing here, you're not vibrating your vocal cords, but you're kind of constricting them a little bit. So air is um, passing through with a bit more constriction and friction. So you're allowing voiceless air to pass through the constriction. And this is once again, you're hearing words like gente, Jorge, gerencia. So it's different from um, the previous sound. Instead of saying gente, Jorge, gerencia, you're saying gente, Jorge, gerencia. So the third question then is, when do you use each of these four pronunciations? Um, first, let's look at when do you use the L instead of the G. So as you may have noticed, the L is sort of like the soft version of the G. So you're more likely to use the L when the letter G is in the middle of the word. So for example, in the words agua and jugo and amigo, you could actually say agua, a jugo and amigo, especially if you're trying to really enunciate to somebody. But when it's in the middle of the word, people get a bit lazier and they just let it fly out more smooth. Agua, jugo, amigo. All right. So the key to kind of speaking Spanish very quickly is to master this L sound. Because when Spanish people speak fast, which you know they often do, there's often because they're taking these types of shortcuts by doing softer um, versions of the pronunciation. So you're more likely to use the L when you're speaking fast. Um, I also noticed that Caribbean speakers use the L the most. Um, they're the least enunciating of the Spanish speakers based on how it's written. So they'll say, ah, woo, ah, woo, and then their tongue won't even touch the soft palate at all. It'll be an approximate sound. Next. Um, oh, and by the way, a single person can use both sounds depending on their accent and context. So it's not a hard, fast rule. You just have to listen to whatever people you're living amongst, who you're ever trying to mimic, and then do what they do. So when do you use the instead of the So the is the soft version of the okay? So this depends entirely on the accent of the speaker. Um, for example, in Mexico, they tend to say, while in Spain, they almost always say. So a Spaniard would say, Jorge, Javier, Joder, whereas a Mexican would say, Gente, Javier, Jorge. Um, but once again, it depends on the speaker. So you just need to listen to whoever you're speaking with and then do your best to mimic. Now, when do you use the G, and by extension the G, versus the other one. So, when the letter G precedes the letters A, O, or U, then you're going to use the G sound. For example, gato, hugo, gusto. Notice that the uh, letter A comes after it. A, G, A, G, O, G, U. So you're doing a G sound. Now, when the sound G precedes the sounds E and A, so you're saying gi and ge, you need to spell it with the letter U in Spanish. So it's Guillermo, guerra, G-U-I-G-U-E. If that letter U was not there, then people would pronounce it Guillermo and Gerra. Okay, so I'm going to give you more ways of thinking about this so it becomes more clear. But starting off, just think about it that way. If it's an A, O, or U, you're saying G. If it's um, an E or A sound and you want to make the G sound too, you need a letter U there. When do you use the H and the H sounds instead of the G and G sounds? When the letter G precedes the letters E and I, then it's a H. For example, gente, gimnasio, gerencia. Because it's G, E, and G, I, we're pronouncing it H and not gente, gimnasio, gerencia. Now, if you want to make the sound H in combination with the A, O, or U, you would spell it with the letter J or the letter X. So Javier, Julio, Oaxaca, that's an example. Um, if it was a, a G there, it would be Javier, Julio, Oaxaca, right? So J and X are interchangeable. You see J more often, X usually when you, you usually see X in Latin America when you're dealing with um, Native American names. So depending on the word, the sound he can be also written as a J-I. So something to look out for, Jimenez. You can also have a G-I, like gimnasio, but for whatever reason, it's not J-I-M, and for Jimenez, it's not G-I-M. So just based on the word, you just have to kind of learn the language to know which one's different. Um, now, that could be a bit confusing, so I prepared a series of visualizations to help it make it more clear in your head and untangle these spelling and sound associations. So I have two charts here, the G and the G sounds, on the left and the h and the h sounds on the right. Uh, we're just gonna focus on g and h. 
And we have the five vowels of Spanish combined to each. So ga, go, gu, ge, gi, and then ha, ho, hu, he, he. So let's start with the g sound. Ga, go, and gu are written g, a, g, o, and g, u, respectively. But then ge and gi are written g, u, e, and g, u, i. All right. Similarly, ha, ho, and hu are written j, a, or x, a, j, o, or x, o, j, u, or x, u. But then he and he are written gay uh, or written G E or G I or in the case of uh, X of a uh, he it can also be written J I. All right. So look over that graph a little bit to get a better sense of how these things match up. Um, and to put it in the context of actual words, here's actual words: ga as in gato, go, gota, gu, gusta, gay, guerra, gi, Guillermo. Notice how for Guerra and Guillermo, we use the letter U. And then, Ja, Javier, Oaxaca, Jo, Jota, Jochimilco, Ju, Justicia. And I could not find a word that had XU in it. Once again, I only see the X um, as a H sound when you're looking at like Mexican or Aztec words. Um, Jochimilco is a place in Mexico um, with an ancient name of Jochimilco. It's not a Spanish name. Um, and then... When you get to gemelo and gimnasio or Jimenez, that's where the rule changes a bit and you have um, GE and GI or JI. Okay, I'll show you one more visualization to kind of untangle this whole web. So once again, angle brackets means letters. We have the letter G representing four sounds, G, R, H, and H. But these G and H sounds can also be written with the letters G, U, and the H and H sounds can also be written with the letter J and with the letter X. Okay, so this graph right here pretty much shows everything we covered in this lecture. Um, and you might want these slides right now with all this good information in it. If you do, I encourage you to click the link below to download these slides for free. Give them to you for free, my gift to you. And I'll also give you one more free resource. Um, you will need this free resource if you identify with any of these things. You have a hard time understanding native speakers when they speak Spanish fast or when you speak Spanish, you get tongue-tied, you stutter, you trip over your own words, you can't really get it out. Or when you do speak, you have a strong accent and you want to get rid of your accent so you don't stick out as that awkward gringo all the time at parties and get-togethers. Um, or maybe you're just starting out at Spanish and you want to make sure you don't build any bad habits that's going to hold you back in the future for your learning. Um, so if you identify with all that, then you might have already tried to solve this problem before by studying more grammar or memorizing more vocabulary or spending lots of money on private tutoring or even moving to a Spanish-speaking country for more immersion. And don't get me wrong, these things do have an effect. However, you can find that your problem will still persist. It won't go away just by doing these things. And that's because your problem is more elemental than just vocab, grammar, and immersion. So who am I and why should you care what I say about this subject? My name is Idao Sanes, and I grew up monolingual, only speaking English in the United States until I was 18 when I learned Spanish traveling to Mexico. Since then, I've learned French, Portuguese, German, and Chinese, and I speak these languages with a good enough accent to often fool native speakers into thinking I'm one of them. And the only time that I'm not able to do this consistently is in Chinese. I can do it on the phone, but for some reason in person, people never believe me when I try to tell them that I'm Chinese. Um, so I developed a pronunciation first language learning approach called the mimic method and this approach has helped thousands of people from around the world learn languages faster, understand more and speak with a better accent. And so why is your problem more elemental than vocab, grammar and immersion? Well, based on the mimic method philosophy, we start with the basic idea that all languages are based on sound. All I'm doing right now is just smacking my lips and tongue and soft palate together to create sounds, and then you're interpreting those sounds and getting meaning from them. But at the end of the day, it's just an exchange of sound. Um, the Spanish language has 39 elemental sounds. We covered four of them today, but there are 35 other sounds in Spanish that you need to know. So everything you will ever hear a native speaker say can be broken down into some combination of these 39 elemental sounds. Doesn't matter where they are in the world, if you're a native speaker of Spanish, everything they say is just broken down into 39 different elemental pieces. So if you can't understand Spanish well, it's probably because you can't hear Spanish sounds well. And if you can't speak Spanish well, it's probably because you can't pronounce Spanish sounds well. 
hearing and pronunciation are the physical aspects. You can't understand if you can't hear, and you can't speak if you can't pronounce. So the average Spanish learner is mishearing or mispronouncing around 11 elemental sounds. But each person is different. Some people mess up these sounds. Other people mess up these sounds. It's all based on who you are. Um, so if you've been following along up until now, the question you should be asking yourself is, which of these 39 elemental sounds am I messing up without realizing it? And then when you think about that question, you should be answering the next question, which is, how are these holes in my Spanish holding me back in Spanish conversation when I'm trying to connect with native speakers? So to help you answer these questions, I made a free Spanish pronunciation guide called the 39 Elemental Sounds of Spanish. And it's a PDF of all 39 elemental sounds of Spanish, including their IPA symbols. So the International Phonetic Alphabet, as we've been using before, you can learn all that very quickly with this guide. Um, we'll give example words for each sound spoken clearly by a native speaker. So you can actually hear these sounds live in the flesh from a real native Spanish speaker. Um, I also have a quick video walkthrough of all 39 sounds to kind of get you oriented into the soundscape of Spanish. And if you just click the link below, then you can download this free guide for free. Or if you go to mimicmethod.com slash Spanish 39, you can download it there. So if you want to take your first step towards speaking Spanish like a native, then just click below to download the PDF slides of this presentation and our free guide, the 39 Elemental Sounds of Spanish. Um, just click the link in the description and download for free. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments of this video. Please click like if you like this video. And please subscribe to our channel if you want to get more videos on pronunciation and language learning. All right, thanks for watching.